Hey everybody, today Doug and I are going down memory lane and we'll both be speaking to you in just a few minutes. But I wanted to begin today by telling you that February 17th through the 24th is National FFA Week. And we were a part of that back in the day and still love it and support FFA. It is a great, wonderful organization and has played such a vital role in our lives. I wanted to show you three of our jackets and tell you briefly about them. And then Doug and I will come back and we'll talk to you more specifically. The first jacket that I want to show you is Doug's FFA jacket when he was in high school. It has his name on it. He was secretary um, in 1961, 62, and it has the emblem right there. The second jacket that I want to show you is one that is a very coveted jacket and a very coveted award. It has his name on it, and he earned the American Farmer degree in 1965, the hardest degree that can be earned, and that name has changed uh, since 1965, um, the name of the degree, and Doug will speak to you about that. And then, when I was a senior in high school, I was honored by being named the FFA Chapter Sweetheart. In 1966, I was named the Sweetheart, and there's the emblem, and I was honored with this white corduroy jacket. Okay, so Doug and I were very privileged to be a part of FFA and me, FHA, Future Homemakers of America, back in the 60s. We loved it. It was meaningful in our lives. And I was looking back at the motto for FFA, and I just love it. It said, doing to learn, learning to do, earning to live, and living to serve. And those are words that Doug and I have tried to incorporate into our lives uh, along with our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and it has carried us far in life and it has served us well. So I want to um, give Doug the opportunity to tell about his experience in high school, uh, in FFA and beyond and then I'll come back and I'll share a little bit more about my experience as well. Take it away sweetheart. <laughs> Needless to say, I get emotional when I think about our experience with the Future Farmers of America. Back in the day, mainly in the early 60s, as a young teenage guy, Something about the Future Farmers of America really resonated with me. I was born and raised on a farm and uh, really enjoyed the outdoor life. Uh, as the original FFA Creed emphasized, the outdoor life was, was the life that uh, really everybody wanted to live. And I certainly had a passion for it. And I suppose that the reason that a lot of uh, rural guys back in my day uh, became a part of, of the FFA, it, it, it uh, came through uh, an ag class uh, as part of an ag class. It was a club and uh, a good experience, good time, good fellowship. Uh, and we really enjoyed, you know, that aspect of it. But uh, the longer I was in it, the more I realized uh, how important it really was, and and what it what it was trying to teach the young men. Uh, at th at that time, it was only uh, boys and only farm boys. Uh, uh, we were really an elite club in that respect. Now, uh, the FFA reaches out uh, to boys and girls and even uh, goes back into middle school, uh, which is not a bad thing. But there was so much to learn, and, and, and that was uh, the, the, 
the good part, the real good part about my experience was uh, learning the uh, the many aspects of uh, the FFA and and uh, what was being taught in our ag classes. Uh, it was very helpful, not not so much for that period of time, but for our future. And and we were learning then uh, the things that we would need. We're still living. We're still living the what we were taught and what we learned uh, in those days. And uh, my speaking uh, is not as good as I wish that it were, but I learned to public speak uh, in FFA, serving as an officer and, and, and being, you know, a part of that experience. Uh, but the integrity part uh, really uh, lives on in my life uh, today. Uh, this is my, uh, my jacket from 1961-62 when I was serving as, as secretary of our chapter and the one that I am most proud of is my American Farmer jacket. Uh, see the, the emblem on the back in Cairo, Georgia, our hometown. Uh, the American farmer jacket in my day was very difficult to earn. Only one in 1,000 members was awarded this jacket. And the ratio is astonishing when you think about it. And I've, I've gone back in my mind and tried to remember uh, the members in uh, my county that I knew that received this award and I can count every one of them on one hand. So it, it was a great privilege to uh, receive this award and uh, it, it came as a result of not one event or, or one project, but over my entire uh, experience in the FFA. Uh, all of the projects, uh, all of the records, all of the, the supervision that, that went into that. Uh, and it was a real experience. And just as a side note, I happened to, to pick this cup up and it says uh, Eastern Airlines on, on the cup. My first experience on a commercial airline flight was on an Eastern jet out of Atlanta uh, to Kansas City, Missouri. First time I ever rode on a jet <laughs> was to go to Kansas City, Missouri to the National FFA Convention and receive my award. And this actually is the key that I was presented in Kansas City for the American Farmer Degree Award. So I, I'm very proud of it. Now, this is nostalgia. Eastern Airlines has not existed for a long, long time. This cup actually uh, was received. My wife and I, along with her parents, took a trip to San Francisco, California on the inaugural Eastern Airlines flight to San Francisco. So that was in 1978. So that was 13 years after my American Farmer degree. I don't re recall the year that Eastern uh, ceased to exist, but, but I do recall that my first commercial flight was to receive this American Farmer Award. Uh, so that was quite an experience, both the flight and especially receiving the award. So the blue and gold is, is precious. You guys and girls that, that have these jackets 
wear them with pride and listen to your instructors, your any mentor you have in, in the uh, FFA experience, listen to them and learn and grow and, and become what the FFA really uh, stands for. God bless you and, and may your experiences be as precious as mine and Joyce's. And I want to show you something else also. Doug went to uh, Kansas City, Missouri, and he and I were dating at that time when he received his uh, American um, Farmer Award, and I was very proud of that. And this is a scarf that he brought his sweetheart. You can see it there. It says uh, Vocational Agriculture, uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And you can tell this is really, really old. And you know what? Well, I, it was in what? 1965. So it's that old because this is 19, I mean, 2024, the last time I checked. <laughs> so I use this every day and I put it around my shoulders. Uh, it's close to my heart uh, when I do my hair every morning and my makeup. So I just put it around my shoulders and I hope that it never, um, anything ever happens to it because I treasure it and I love it and I love you too. But I wanted to say just a little bit about my experience uh, in high school as well. Uh, I was in um, FHA, Future Homemakers of America, and then in my senior year, which was 1965-66, I was privileged to be selected as the FFA sweetheart. And prior to women being, women being able to participate and be a part of FFA, which happened in 1969, one of the ways that they could be involved was being um, was to serve or being selected as the sweetheart. And being uh, the FFA sweetheart allowed me, as well as others back in that day, uh, an opportunity to, participa to participate in activities um, and events that were held. I remember particularly um, the FFA annual banquet that was held uh, at high school every year. Um, and I got to help to coordinate that. And I also spoke. I got up before all of those people. And like Doug said, it just helped so much to develop so many talents, hidden talents that we didn't know that we had. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful for that. So um, as we celebrate uh, National FFA Week, and it's called FFA, the National FFA Organization now, I believe that's what it's called. Uh, we salute all former and all current FFA members and are thankful for you and hope that you will just continue to grow as this organization continues to grow. It's been our privilege to share and I hope that you've enjoyed it today.